Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going back to the basics and talking water changes. I'm guys, Devin from Reef Dudes. Today we're going back to the basics a bit and talking water changes. Now, I do a lot of advanced topics and I also have a lot of beginners on the channel. And when you're new doing water changes, how to mix salt, that can be a little bit intimidating. Um, so I figured it'd be a good one to do. I am far overdue for a water change. I try to do, you know, a big one every few months just for good measure. Um, and I also do use it as an excuse to clean the sand bed. So today we're gonna be using this guy and I'm gonna go through and clean a lot of the guck out of my sand. Now, if I'm doing, you know, an intermediate one where I don't necessarily care about cleaning the sand bed, I'll tend to use a bigger, thicker hose so that the water change happens much quicker. So the bigger the hose, the quicker you're gonna suck that water out and you can replace it. Um, now, if you really want to make your life easier, I also have something called the Python, which is like a really big hose you can hook up to a tap and it'll create suction and go right down the drain. You don't even have to haul buckets. So that's a really good way to go. Um, today, I'm going to be a little slower just because I want to give the sand bed a really good cleaning and just do a little bit more maintenance on that. Why do we even do water changes in the first place? Well, we're either removing something from the tank, like built up nutrients, could be excess nitrates, phosphates, water change is the best way to get them down or you could be adding something to the tank. If you're not dosing elements, your calcium milk, your mag, or trace elements, I mean, a water change could be a method to replenish them for you. Generally, I am a big fan of using RODI water for water changes, and I've heard of people using, some people use tap, some people use well water, um, some people will use distilled water. Personally, I'm a fan of having an RODI unit in your house because you can just make that purified water. It's always on hand for your ATO and for mixing up water. We'll start by filling up the bin. Finally, we'll put a heater in here as it's filling just to bring the water up to temp slowly as the barrel fills. And once it's full, we can add a power head in and start adding our salt to mix it up. So today I'm actually going to be trying a new salt I haven't used before. Uh, this is Fauna Marin. Now, I've heard really good things about this salt, but I've never had a chance to use it. Uh, just parameters, calcium 440, mag 1300, uh, alkalinity 8.5, and K, potassium 400. So pretty solid average reef parameters, kind of where I keep my tank anyway, so it makes me happy. Uh, no nitrate, no phosphate. That is something that stood out to me because you definitely have some of the cheaper salts, especially if they're a little bit dirtier, they can have nitrates and phosphate in there. And if you have high nutrients, you do not want that. So, and I struggle with them, so I'm happy to see that. Um, also, I'm ready to use in five minutes. That is quick. Um, so you can mix it up, you use it almost instantly. You know, if I had to do an emergency water change or something, it's nice that you can do it right away. And something else that I just noticed, free ICP test inside. Heck yeah, that's a sweet bonus. Not gonna lie, I'm a little excited about that free ICP test. I'm far overdue on one. Now, when you're mixing up salt, you need to mix it to a certain salinity. In reef tanks, we generally do 35 PPT or 1.026 if you're using the optical refractometer. Um, I'm using the HANA tester, so it's a nice easy way to check it. I do like the digital one. Now, if you have a fish only tank, you know, around 30 PPT or 1.020, a lot of people do, but if you have corals mixed tank, 35 PPT is what you want to shoot for. I'll tend to just start adding some salt in and let it dissolve into the water. And I'll do this until I reach my 35 PPT mark. All right, things have been mixing for probably close to about 10 minutes now. We got 35 PPT on the dot and the things are looking crystal clear. So that salt actually mixes super clear, super quick, which is awesome. So we should be good to go to do our water change. When you return pump off, you can start siphoning the sand bed and generally do little, little sections at a time to make sure you get it and suck up all that junk that builds up within the sand. And cleaning your sand bed periodically is probably one of the best ways to keep it looking pristine and white. Now as I'm doing, I also will pinch the hose some time to cut back the flow. And I usually do that if the sand gets too high up in the tube and just allow it to fall back out. And when you start getting in these little cracks and crevices that normally don't get clean is when you really start to see all the nasty stuff get sucked out. Now one of the big reasons for using this long skinny one is to try and get through some of the coral and these little crevices right normally couldn't get. As the tank grows in it's definitely a little harder to clean the sand bed and get into a lot of these nooks and crannies so having a long skinny siphon definitely helps on that front. If you're struggling with pH issues something I actually learned is that all that detritus in the tank could actually be creating carbonic acid and adding CO2 to your water so you make it harder if you have an elevated pH so that's another great reason for actually cleaning up all that detritus and sucking it out on a regular basis. Now taking a look at how nasty the water is from all that sand vacuuming, it pretty much sells itself on why it's a good idea to do it. Now if you want to avoid the mouthful of water, just put part of your tube underwater so it kind of humps over the U and take your finger off and it will get the siphon flowing. 
Um, now I feel like I've done enough for the vacuuming, so now we're just going from our water volume and using this thicker hose, we'll speed it up. As I'm sucking out water anyways, I tend to just kind of hover over the rock and just surface suck up anything that might be have settled on the rock. Now you can of course use buckets to refill it, but I am a huge fan of using the Zeiss Ultra Zero combined with this python hook and the little extension cable. So you can just turn it on and off nice and easily and let it refill the tank. And this little hook prevents anything from falling off and spilling, making a mess. You're not lugging buckets, so it's a really good way to go. So it's now been about an hour or two since I did the water change. Everything's filled up, everything's back to looking pristine. And I don't know if it's just me, but the tank always just seems to look extra vibrant after a water change. The cartels seem happier, I don't know. It has that extra little glow. You know, it doesn't hurt that the sand bed's a little cleaner and everything else, but water changes really, really do go a long way into just keeping everything happy. And I don't do them enough, so I mean, it's a good reminder to do them once in a while. And again, if you guys have a newer tank, definitely keep up your water changes. Hopefully this helped out some of you guys' new reefers and some of the old school reefers. Kind of reminder, just make sure you do them once in a while. Alright guys, as always, if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.